welcome everyone, everyone here now and everyone that we're expecting within a few minutes to the, what I think is the inaugural meeting of the um, Heart Work and Philosophy Guild of the Lifeboat Academy. And caretakers Roland and myself, April, are here to sort of help frame how it is that we are going to have meetings, first of all, and then move into action points and what we need to be thinking about in the next while uh, by the end of the meeting. Roland, anything you want to say? No, that's, uh, that's good, thanks. And welcome to Ben. As I said, we are expecting um, several other people to join us as well. So, Roland and I have some suggestions for how we start meetings and how we begin to establish how it is that we're going to work together without making too many assumptions about what that might be before we have a chance to talk to everybody in the Guild. Um, Generally, we have begun our work by having a land acknowledgement for the territories from which we're joining today and doing a short check-in and having a look at what our agreements have been previously in this work. So we thought that we would begin today uh, in those ways. And just to say that anything that, that we are assuming is open to question and open to suggestions and considerations. And we'll get into how we're going to do that in just a bit. So beginning with the land acknowledgement, is there anyone here who would like to do that? I'll do that if no one else would prefer to. Hearing no other suggested um, folks, I will do that for this occasion. So I would like to acknowledge that I am on the ancestral territories, unceded ancestral territories as a settler guest of the Seashaz Nation on the Sunshine Coast of British Columbia. I want to acknowledge the, the keeping of the land and the, the holding of the values that put the land first in this area that comes from the Seychelles Nation, who are part of the Coastal Salish language group, and to say that I have benefited by their stewardship since time immemorial in this area. And in the face of colonization and huge challenges to people's health and to their existence, that they have continued to steward the lands that I'm benefiting from now and I'd like to acknowledge that I've been welcomed as an ally and that I'm definitely a different person than I would have been with that welcome and with the learnings, the knowledge keepings, the share of um, protocol and regalia and the collective welcoming to these lands of which I've been a part. I'd like to appreciate that and to, um, I guess, take on responsibility, my responsibilities as an ally and uh, continue to learn and to act on my responsibilities to the people and the land. And now I think we'll turn to check-ins and the question 
for today is what is springing up for you at this moment. The circle, as I see it at the moment, is Rulan, Ben, and myself. So over to Rulan. What is springing up for you? Uh, new beginnings, new uh, guild, uh, new group. Over to Ben. Hmm. Well, for me, I think what's really springing is, or what's making it feel spring-like is that we are having some really lovely sunny weather. And, um, and that is, and I am, I'm having a very low energy day. Yesterday was a, like an overly booked and uh, taxing day and, and my sleep was disturbed last night. So I'm, I'm really sleepy, but then the sunlight is, making it feel um uh, okay it's making it feel like a relaxing like i can sort of relax and enjoy the the warming of the sunlight so that's my answer over to you april what's springing up for me today is is a a feeling in the air that there's something different maybe it's because it's a sunny day and there's um We've had a time change. And somehow that I'm feeling that in, in my body. And my body is responding to the fact that light happens at different times in my house and in my yard now. And as I look around me, uh, people and their dogs walk by quite often. And most of them have a spring in their step is the only way I can describe it. So something, something is happening with us humans in our response to the season, I think. Next on our agenda was a wish to look at the agreements that we have generally worked with in our work with the Lightboat Academy. But I have neglected to um, tee up the slide that has the agreements on them. So I'm going to mention the ones I can remember and then go around the circle to ask if there's other ones that we generally are using and then ask, um, are you okay to accept these agreements today? And is there anything else that would help you to show up in the way that you want to for this session? So one of the key agreements is that no one has to do anything. As Ben often says, this is a non-coercive space. But the other side of, of that statement is that we have to accept the consequences of whatever it is that we do, but there will be no coercion to, to be here. Um, another really critical item is the the ask that we listen first listen for understanding before we speak and that we share the space with all of us we're all in this together um and all of us share this this time as well so kind of coming forward and then stepping back after that is um is one of the ways that we work with doing that sharing roland is there any on the list that you'd like to speak to i think uh just technically as you came in, uh, it said that the session was being recorded. So if uh, if you're uncomfortable with that during or even after, let us know. Uh, so part of the agreement is, uh, are you OK with the session being recorded? Uh, over to Ben. 
Um, well, I, uh, I put the standard agreements in the chat and um, there's a couple that we often put in, I think, um, speak from your heart, speak from, for what's uh, true for you and recognizing both and not either or. So recognizing uh, and speaking your own truth. Also, you need to create space for other people to speak their truth, which can be different. And, um, and of course, the one that I always like to add in, which is have fun with it. And uh, we work best when we can work with some light and humor and playfulness and uh, curiosity. So I would like to keep that spirit alive, keep it playful. Um, yeah, um, back over to you, April. Thank you. Um, is there anything else that uh, that should be added? to this list for today. Right. So sums are indicating that you can live with these understandings with these agreements at the moment. Great. Thank you. Roland, do we have a way of showing the uh, um, agenda ideas that we came up with for today? I managed to share a screen. So I've added the uh, agreements. There's uh, under the description, there are some agenda items that we're proposing are uh, standard. So um, they don't need to be put in as a task. Uh, and I've put in the agreements um, and, uh, and in terms of agenda items, um, uh, it'd probably be useful to uh, go over what, uh, how we're currently structuring the roles and what they mean, uh, and then make sure that everyone's had a chance to look at the driver statement and um, uh, if there's any questions uh, around that. Um, and then uh, some uh, chatting about onboarding, uh, what we think uh, would be useful and what uh, people uh, feel like they need for their onboarding. Uh, and um, then uh, actually going into the driver statement and um, looking at what the uh, the seasonal priorities are and uh, talking about talking about them. Uh, and uh, finally, um, what are the next best best steps? So part of the, the the as we'll see in the driver statement, part of the the role of hard work is um, um, uh, engagement. And so, uh, what can what can we start to think about to to do uh, uh, as the hard work guild for the Lifeboat Academy in that respect? And then, and then just checking in with everybody at the at the close of the meeting. Uh, and um, I can, uh, does that, is, is there anything that anyone would like to add or any questions, Ben? Sorry, I just noticed that there's uh, an email from Linda. Apparently she was trying to get in and there's no one here. So I'm going to send the link to her and it just makes me wonder if other people, I'm going to pass, I'll post it in Slack as well. Okay. Um, we have people in the waiting room. Yay. Oh, awesome. Hey, you're here. <laughs> Sorry. I've been waiting here for 10 minutes. Okay. Oh, I no. <laughs> Sorry about that. So um, where do we go from here? <laughs> what about, what oh, about I, this? <laughs> I, think, I think we should welcome Jake, who may be there, who's, whose name is there in any case as well. And, Hello, uh, everyone. Hey, Jake. Hi, Jake. Thanks for uh, persisting to join us. Um, the next thing is we were we've uh, gone over our land acknowledgement check in and checked the agreements again to make sure 
that they're okay to use at least for this occasion. Um, and just to say that uh, caretakers for this guild are uh, Roland and April at the minute. And so we had prepared a provisional kind of an agenda just to get us started. Oops. And right. sorry, Ben, did you? I'm, I'm going to share the screen so that uh, our agreements are visible. I was just trying to put them in chat and then I pasted the oh. wrong thing in chat. That's why I was, that's why I said, oops, I'm going to mute myself now. Thank you, anyway. <laughs> so the people who have newly joined might want to take a quick look at the agreements and just make sure that, uh, that they suit your needs for today and that you're um, able to to live with them. And as well, if there's anything that you want as a change or an addition to let us know that. Sounds good to me. Great. Okay. If they're similar to what we've had so far, it's good to me for me. I'm still driving for another 10 minutes. Ah, okay. Yes. They are basically the same agreements that we've had with the addition that the session is being recorded. And so we had asked if you don't want to be recorded to please let us know. Um, and that's as far as we had got. We now are showing our suggested agenda for the day. Um, this is how much we think we can get through in the time that that we have. I think if there's anything else we can we can. Uh, discuss that otherwise as part of what we're doing we will probably come up with what the system is going to be going forward for creating and uh populating the agenda and we are following the circle process today our circle is is now larger and so the circle is uh, Roland, Ben, April, Linda, and Jake. Got it. Okay. So we were about to move into the um, the first item that we thought we should have a look at, which is what are the roles that are part of the new guild system. Let's go around the circle and, and see what it is, how much people know about these roles at this point, um, starting with Roland. Uh, so my understanding of the roles um, uh, is that uh, a caretaker is something that's separate from peer, apprentice, and helper. Caretaker is uh, essentially the uh, uh, coordinates um, the uh, the the guild is acts actually a little bit like a like a secretary, a coordinator. Um, while uh, everybody, including the caretaker, is either a peer, an apprentice, or a helper. Um, and there's there's more on what those categories are in the onboarding, but uh, uh, essentially um, it's linked to the badge system um, and also the level of interest. So if you want to show up and just put up tables, you're a helper. Um, if you have knowledge, experience, that you want to share and as well as um, uh, experience in the Lifeboat Academy, then you can graduate to being a peer. Um, uh, and then the, the apprentice is sort of moving towards peership. Um, so everybody, uh, um, uh, everybody is either a peer apprentice or a helper. April and I are co-caretakers. Um, uh, so we're not, we're not, we don't direct, 
we don't make decisions, but we help to facilitate, um, uh, you know, um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I think I think of it a lot as a secretary. So messages come in, tasks show up on Asana. Um, uh, 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 somebody is having a hard time um, uh, accessing or finding a document, and those are the types of those are the types of things that we do uh, that we help out with um, uh, uh, meetings, setting up meetings, and and uh, and such. Um, and that the running, the actual running of the guild is everybody's responsibility. So it's through the meetings and discussions and the meetings that we see who does what and and even maybe the how. So that's my understanding. And so I am going to pass over to Ben. Yeah, that's um, that's my understanding as well. And um, because we use sociocracy, it means everyone has an active role, whether you're a helper, apprentice, or a peer, you still can contribute to the process of coming up with agreements. Um, so your considerations are always welcome and, um, and your objections as well. Uh, your concerns and objections are, are equally noted. One of the things that's a bit of a difference between um, uh, I think there's uh, recognizing that, um, how do I want to say this? I think that one of the key differences comes in innovations or, or suggestions for improvements. And um, part of the reason for having apprentice and peer levels is that um, it's kind of understood that you can't offer improvements to a system until you understand how it works or components thereof. And so um, once you have earned your, and the other thing too is with apprentice and peer, it's kind of a fluid boundary because since there are badges, you could have a number, you could have all, you don't have to have the, the complete set of badges to be a peer. Um, there's actually we uh, we've discussed and and um, are encouraging the guilds to identify the badges that are required for peership. You know that there's a certain there's a certain basic level of understanding that you need um, to be able to be a full peer, and um, but then you know people will have different badges within the guild. Some people may a couple people might have a few badges that other people don't have, and and so forth. So it's not like there's a, a clear, you're an apprentice and then you're up here. You're kind of always a little bit of an apprentice and always a little bit of a peer. Um, so it doesn't really affect the engagement in the process. Um, it really has more to do with um, an understanding of people's depth of knowledge in the area. It's just a recognition of that really more than anything else. Um, so at least that's my understanding and I'll pass over to Linda. Oh, well, no, I guess I pass over April, to April. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, in terms of roles, I have a beginning understanding of caretaker role, um, which as I think Roland said, it's, uh, uh, we are not the directors, so we're sort of neutral brokers of the flow of uh, what needs to go on in this particular guild. Um, my understanding of the other roles is just in the beginning stages, but I have to say that mostly I'm fascinated by what badges might look like, how many badges there would be, what they look like, and how soon I can get some of them, to, uh, <laughs> and where it is that I'm going to wear them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and all of that's been running running through my head rather than the responsibilities <laughs> involved. Um, I understand that there's kind of a laddering of uh, depth of knowledge and experience that relates to each of the other categories. And I do find that my ego enters the room sometimes wanting for sure to have a lot of badges in certain areas because I think I know a lot about those areas. So I have to figure out how, how that works. Um, over to Linda. 
Well, my analytical mind, because I'm new to all this, I guess I have a question. This is this all sociocracy? Does that is that where this comes from? Even the badges stuff? <laughs> no. <laughs> so that's one question I have. And then the other thing that's an obvious, you know, huh? Is it doesn't make any sense to me until we, you know, we have items on our to-do list and who volunteers for what. And then, you know, we kind of self-appoint ourselves, I guess, as one of those. So that I would imagine practically speaking or functionally, that's how this will work. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense until we actually know what's on our plate and we start to actually do things. So <laughs> that's my only comment, my, those two comments. And on to you, uh, I forget. Uh, when Jake left, so I guess. Yeah, I think he got bounced. It sounds like oh. I think he was traveling. So I'm hoping he'll join back in. He may be home by now. So back to you, Roland. Roland or April? I don't know. Me. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Roland. <laughs> uh, well, and and I'm uh, still learning sociocracy, so I'm going to leave it to April and Ben to parse out the differences. I do my, but I I will practice though, and I think that, and I'm going to model practicing because it's good to practice. Um, so my understanding of uh, having been involved thus far uh, uh, in the socio uh, sociocracy part of it is that sociocracy is the framework and it is uh, uh, it's a little bit like a water that it will um, it will take the shape of the container that it's put in so so we we use so we use sociocracy as the as the the, the framework and then there's there's the bits and pieces that we uh, we build around it. So the badges, I don't think is specifically sociocracy. It is, we were trying to find a solution to uh, be able to both at the same time track and um, reward, that's the right word, or acknowledge, track and acknowledge. Um, uh, where people were at in in their development and in what they had to offer, of recognizing that there are some people who come with um, uh, with uh, skills that uh, that I don't have, for example, um, that I would want them to become a peer with that skill. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so. So to sort of answer the sociocracy question from my understanding, um, and uh, I think bringing up the badges is great because that's something that we could work on collectively is what are the badges. And mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so uh, with that, I will pass over to Ben. Um, yeah, that's that's actually a really good uh, um, answer. The the badges themselves come evolved out of um, more a farm need than a, it, it. So it comes from um, uh, actually biodynamic farming. There's a biodynamic farming organization and they have developed a long checklist of skills necessary for running a biodynamic farm. And in our experience of bringing woofers and volunteers and interns onto the farm, it became really clear that um, we needed a way of checking that people actually knew, you know, how to plant things or how to weed or how to, you know, do those sort of component tasks. And um, so um, that was kind of the origin for it. The one thing that is uh, sociocratically related is um, that we differentiate chores from projects and um, chores, and, and, and that's, we're putting our farm lingo on the underlying sociocratic principle, which is operations from projects. And um, especially within operations, there are some repetitive, very specific tasks that need to get accomplished and making sure that people are trained in those and you know can know how to put out the newsletter, can know, how to set up a webinar who can, you know, those sorts of things. 
So that's that's where the badges came from was a, a, a mashup of um, having a way of describing the chores, the the ongoing operational aspects, and a, like. Like Roland said, um, acknowledging, recognizing, and acknowledging, and then it it also creates a really good model for a peer to peer learning environment, where anyone can come in and say, "Hey, here's a skill that I would like to share," and then they write up a how to guide, and like here's what you would need to be able to do to earn it. The badges are all performance based, so it's not about book learning; it's actually about application. And so the whoever wants to offer up a badge would have the guide and the um, uh, the demonstration. Here's here's how you would demonstrate that skill, and then a badge is created, and they can they can uh, all of the training is shadowing. So somebody shadows somebody who has that skill already until they feel like they know it, and then they are shadowed. Um, to, until everyone feels comfortable that the knowledge is transferred. And then, um, then basically then they can be shadowed by somebody else and then we can disseminate it. And that actually comes from the, the music project that you talked about, April, um, that uh, I can't remember, is it, it's a, I know it's a Central and South American um, music, music oh, project. Oh, Elsa yes. Yeah, go ahead, over to you. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I guess this came out of we're trying to incorporate things that we think are are transformative and sustainable over time and over culture and distance. And so the the model of El Sistema um, music systems that came out of the the barrios of of Central and South America as a, a life-saving civic um, approach that was grassroots and where anyone that knows a musical instrument is invited into neighborhood or regional or area kind of orchestras and invited from the youngest age possible to the oldest age possible. And you get to be part of it by agreeing that when you're taught something that you, your role is to teach it to somebody else. And in El Sistema, it's, it's in age and also um, uh, not ability, but, but musicality and, and the amount of um, where you are kind of in, in the musical hierarchy um, but that has resulted in amazing orchestras being produced in South America with uh, all ages involved and involved in very high level uh, music instruction by other people from around the world and has changed, not only changed lives, but neighborhoods and entire social settings. And it's the, the passing on the peer, peer to peer, no matter what your age is, passing on of uh, what, whatever, and it's now a worldwide system. So we wanted to to honor that whole idea of the passing on what you have, and um, being eager to learn from all the people around you. Because in that example and in our experience, that that's kind of transformative. And that's enough for me. Um, are we still talking about roles now? <laughs> get it, get it, think, care, caretakers need to get us back on the <laughs> back on track. So the caretaker is now passing to Linda. <laughs> I have nothing more to say on roles. I, I'm assuming they'll unfold as necessary and as you know we progress. So I'm good to go. Back to you, Roland. Anything else anyone else wants to add in terms of the roles? Because uh, then I will I will unshare the page and reshare the page with uh, the driver statement. So uh, let me do that. Um, so the the 
a very poetic phrase describing the primary function of the artwork and philosopher guild is that it acts as the emotional heart of the lifeboat academy it creates opportunities for people to develop deeper relationships with themselves each other and our relations on the farm so that's our relations on the farms is the the first nations concept of all our all our relations everything everything living um is uh as interrelated um and um so um i could go through what's what's written here i'm going to assume that you you've started to make yourselves uh, familiar with it should i should i go through it or do do i just open it up for questions what would what what makes sense What are we trying to work on right now? I mean, what I mean, the I was I was part of putting some of these together. I remember with Ben. So I guess I'm just wondering, what are we trying to do today on these? It's uh, uh, I thought it would be useful to go through the driver's statement, uh, just make sure that we're we are all on a similar page uh, for, for what's on it that we're we're familiar with what's there i was actually i wanted to suggest that um uh we use what's under main responsibilities and have a subcategory of the agreements for the meeting so that we're this is uh, as a way of reminding ourselves of what the hard work and philosophy guild is about uh because there, we are going to be the discussions are going to likely um, cross over into other guilds, or there will be requests made of made of us that that would be best taken care of by another guild. So being able to keep in mind uh, what this one is about could be useful. Uh, so, so this is just an opportunity to discuss uh, anything, any questions, any concerns, anything um, that we feel could be added to uh to the driver's statement for for the guild so um uh are there any comments or anything anything anyone has to say about about the driver's statement is it is it clear for for everyone april you're good um i i am good i'm wondering if uh if if we need to discuss any of these further, maybe not today, but as part of future actions, do we want to have a couple of of these in each of our next few meetings to to flesh out a little bit? Um, so examples, um, you know, place places to implement these. Um, what it is we might need from other guilds for each of these, or do we want to, you know, begin a, a a way of dialoguing with other guilds about about each of these? Because they're going to be assuming that we'll, that we'll be doing these responsibilities, but um, we might need some more details about the responsibilities, so we truly understand what our work is, and we can say yes or no, um, or you know, identify where the boundary issues are with, with other guilds. And back to you, Roland, I think. Shall we continue in the in the circle format? Ben, ben is away, so you were next. Um, so after you would be Linda. Yeah, I mean, I think where I am just I, I I don't have any problem at all with anything I'm reading here um I guess being who I am I, I would say well how do we operationalize these I mean we could take each one and say well how is this going to play out as we unfold the lifeboat academy you know how how in other words how how are how are we going to build and deepen 
our internal relationships? What's our process? What what are we going, going to be doing? <laughs> How do we build it right now with each other? You know, so we could start with ourselves and then we could say, okay, once we do this with ourselves and we have some kind of reflection process, then maybe we're ready to make some suggestions for other of the other guilds for how they deepen their inner. I mean, so it's just to, how do you operationalize it? That's the next step for me. I'm done. I'm complete. So, Ben, I think I'm not. I'm yeah. I forget because I think it was Jake that came after me, so I'm forgetting. I think it, I I can go next. Okay. Um, well, I think in terms of operationalizing, and this is part of familiar becoming more familiar with with what how things work. Uh, uh, one of the indicators of how we've been doing things, with, which we're now calling hard work, uh, is under the chores. So the the morning circle, which is uh, um, uh, a gathering uh, and a grounding together and going over agreements on how we want to be with each other uh, and ourselves during the day, that's that's one of the things that we're already doing. Um, I had a question about hosting navigation tension session sessions. That's uh, I, I wanted to make sure that that's not the same thing as the online. Um, uh, is that the same thing as the online work that is already happening? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, and. Um, and when where it says onboard new guild members is that that's not it's not the same thing as the onboarding that is under the purview of the so so that's something else that I'd like to clarify in terms of like is it it's onboarding just for people who are joining the heart work and philosophy guild okay and I'm just going to take the nodding, the vigorous nodding as 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 the answer to my question. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm trying to bring myself back up to speed, but I was actually going to go and make those changes as you're speaking. <laughs> okay. Um uh right. Um and there's some I think that there's also some uh, indication of how how this guild has been thought of so far in the responsibilities. You know, we're talking about uh, celebrations. Um, uh, at one point, somebody had written in potlucks. We used to have potlucks all the time. So it's ways of uh, of uh, informal as uh, informal and formal ways in which people make connections. Is uh, so, and 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 so so I'm sort of feel like I'm babbling, but I think. If there's anything in there that can help to make this clear, um, or if this might be clear enough, and that it's just a matter of experiencing and talking about it uh, to to familiar, familiarize people with it, um, yeah. And I'm realizing I'm scrolling up and down because I'm used to doing that when it's just me, and then I'm now I'm just realizing that other people are seeing me scrolling up and down, so I'm probably really confusing things, and I apologize. I have to get used to this kind of thing. Um, yeah. So and and actually also in the uh, the driver statement, it it already talks starts to talk about where there would be the most uh, crossover with other. Um, uh, other uh, guilds in the interdependencies, um, and then and then there is um, the the next uh, agenda point. I think is uh, starting to talk about um, the seasonal plan and what we're going to do, and that's also in the in the driver statement under the uh, action plan. So I will pass over to um, I think it's Ben next in the circle. And I apologize, I had to take a call. So are we just going over the driver's statement? Yeah. Okay. Um, and if the only thing that I would add then is all of these things are negotiable um, and, and including, uh, you know, to be honest, I'm the person who put a lot of these, like the chores, the navigating via tensions. I made a decision about throwing it in heart work because it seemed to be one of those, uh, the places where 
people go deep with each other. And um, you could make an argument that it's also part of outreach and network. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that would be one of those opportunities for a conversation between outreach and network and hard work and philosophy about how, you know, who wants to take on what. And uh, so, yeah, it's all it's all negotiable as long as nothing falls through the cracks. And right now, uh, in in sort of sociocracy language, right now we've inherited this as this guild, and we can always send it back to the coordination circle, and say this doesn't feel like it fits. Um, this and this feel like they fit. We're good with that. This one doesn't. We're going to send it back to coordination, and then the coordination circle will you know work it out from there. So. Um, over to April. Um, there's a couple of things that are running through my mind. One of them is, is to explain what the relationship of the coordination circle is to this guild and how how the flow works there. But the other thing is, is looking at the action plan as it exists. And it seems to me that there's a couple of things there that are starting points that that would be good to to have agendized over the next few meetings to as a basis for our work and a lot of this will become more clear as as we go through and do those action plan bits um but just let me attempt to say how i think we are related in this guild to the coordination circle. And maybe if if my view needs to be realigned more realistically, <laughs> somebody else can do that. Um, so the coordination circle is just make sure that everything moves to where it should and is made up out of the caretakers from each of the guilds who bring their guild activities, priorities, and sort of choice points to to the larger circle to uh, to make sure that everything aligns. So there's not duplication and or or sort of boundary conflicts around things, and that um, it also gives a chance to get an overview of, of what else is is going on because there is specialization in, in each of the guilds. So bringing it together to the coordination circle, that's the big picture there. That's the, the map that is biggest, I think, occurs at that level. And the idea is not to impose. So the guilds decide their own work and their own priorities, but the idea is the coordination circle gives the, the overall picture and allows us all to see if there's sort of things that will collide to to or or be left out or dropped for us to recognize those in the the coordination circle and, and talk about them before we go too far astray um and on oh well just to say that i i think our work for the next our immediate short-term actions are contained within the action plan, but we can refine them. And uh, Roland and I came up with, with a few things in tossing this about earlier today, so we can talk about that in a minute. Um, and on to Linda. Um, the only thing I would have to add in just looking at where you guys are, where we are in this process, is it seems to me there there's a distinction between um, being in an online um, process versus being, as you call it, on the farm. It seems like uh, those two contexts uh, are going to affect how we operationalize things. Like I'm not going to be there for the morning circle. Um, so just to bring that up, you know, because I'm just aware of that, you know, I'm kind of off in California trying to figure out what this whole thing is all about. And I'm noticing, you know, there's a lot more that's happening on the farm than I could possibly ever be involved with. So I think in thinking through, you know, what the various guilds are doing, there needs to be some uh, 
you know, thinking of the difference between these two contexts. So I'll yield over to Roland. Uh, I'm looking at the action plan and what is hollow flux? Oh, hollow flux. I can tell you what hollow flux is. <laughs> Can anyone tell me what holoflux is? Holoflux, holoflux, holoflux. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> I've been working with Lee Nickel, who was a uh, he was actually David Bohm's who whose work I followed with my dialogue work. He, he was his editor. And I've been uh, in a three-year process learning what the holoflux is, which comes out of the work of David Bohm. It's just the recognition philosophically and from a life flow point of view that everything is always changing. And um, mm -hmm. it's how it's how to recognize it at a very um, intimate individual level. You know, you notice inside your body how everything's changing. And then you relate that to the wind, it's changing. Everything is changing around us. And it, it helps because we humans get um blocked mainly by language into fixed categories of ways of thinking and thought so understanding the whole of flux is really important to sort of a new way of being in the world this you know i mean i can go on but <laughs> Me too. that's Me too. The, the short version and uh, and one of the things that we say is language is a useful lie um and what you're saying, I th I love this so much because I come from I think I come from a, 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 a at least in spirit uh, to the same conclusions uh, through things like Octavia Butler in uh, Parable of the Sower, uh, God is change, uh, and God is not a being but is a force, and change is the only constant in the universe. There's the the the, the Buddhist uh, perspective of groundlessness that everything is always in movement, is always in change, uh, and that's the way I talk about about this, about the topic. So I just really think it's fantastic, and this is I think really for me this is the nugget of the Heart Work and Philosophy Guild. It's mm -hmm. bringing things together. Uh, and 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 uh, April and I talked about some ideas about how to be able to do that. And and my thinking over since this morning until now has 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 already evolved around around what that could look like. And Linda, I think that your point about um, the feeling of there's stuff going on on the farm and uh, and and being separate, I think, is really is really important. Uh, yeah, because I think it's an indicator of what it means to be working um, uh, uh, in this fashion. I don't know what to call it. I think I don't know if we're if we are nodes of the same organism or if because I always think of the farm as being nested within the larger, more amorphous being of the Lifeboat Academy. Uh, and at the same time, the fact that the farm is a is a physical place gives it, you know, actual material weight, uh, in in uh, in my mind. Uh, so so I think that that's a really a really interesting. I, and I love that you brought that up uh, because I think that that's a really interesting uh, problem to deal with in trying to deal with physical problems such as climate change. Um, in uh, in this virtual way, you know, we're communicating and we're having real communication, and yet there's this virtual component that that is exacerbated by distance. All right, I'm totally. I have no idea where 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 we are, which is why I'm <laughs> not a particularly good circle keeper. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm going to trust in the wisdom of the circle and pass over to Ben. Um, well, I think this is, um, when I, I, I agree with April, when I look at the action plan, that is the core. 
And um, I think your your description of the relationship between the guilds and the coordination circle and and you know by extension with each other is also really good. And it makes me think that the goal uh you know the guilds are not to take on their own how do I, uh the guilds receive their function from the organism right we have we serve a necessary function in the lifeboat academy and we're not going to branch out and do things that are just like not serving the greater whole so there's that decentering you know we're 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 doing our work but in a way where we're recognizing the center is sort of beyond us or you know whatever that language is and um and it really seems like this is the heart work and philosophy guild what is that philosophy what is that world view that is part of the academy and i think the hollow flex it's i'd never heard that word but what a perfect word and um and yeah it's like oh that's spot on and it's even that intimate direct personal experiential understanding of it. it's not an intellectual exercise it's not a conceptual thing in fact the concepts get in the way and um and and your your other comment linda about the how does the property on on you know spalding valley road relate to the online stuff. And so I want to match Cosmo local hollow flux. Um, and <laughs> because I, I think we are talking about how do we manage that? Um, like Roland was saying, you know, it's nodes in a network, it's um, instantiations, you know, it's, uh, but that are that we're still connected. And Cosmo local, my my simple understanding of it is things that are heavy stay local and things that are light go far. And ideas are the lightest things of all. So ideas and communication, um, that is woven. That's that's the ether that, you know, the the mycelial network, but that all of us are in a place. So it's not like the only real place is here. You know, everybody is in a real place. But how do we, how do we, um, yeah, how do we manage that? How do we, what's the, um, and actually I was in a, we were recording a podcast yesterday um, with Andy Wildman in Tasmania. And um, one of the things that came up was that same, how, how can we, here we are, we're, we're collaborating from the Pacific Northwest to Texas to Tasmania and talking about place-based and can we be how can we be talking about place-based anything and land-centered anything if we're in these radically different places but i think this is what we're getting at that it's not um i think that that's that that unpacking getting clear on that worldview and how we communicate it and how we create the opportunities for people to integrate hollow flux like a a lived experience of working with the hollow flux in a cosmolocal way is, you know, what that's our task. That's our challenge. And the fact that we don't know how to do it right now is a good thing, not a bad thing. It's a, you know, this is a Q mission impossible music. Dun, 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 dun. You know, like this, the, your mission, should you choose to take it is to figure out how do we do cosmolocal hollow flux, uh, education training or whatever um i too am babbling just because this is what makes this guild so interesting yeah. is these ideas are so cool and and so i think in a very specific way what our our priority action items are is simply how do we ex how do we engage more people in this conversation about what does that mean to you to live in the hollow flux in your location. Um, so with that, I'm gonna pass over to April. <laughs> it is fun to swim in this <laughs> conversation. I have to also say, I mean, the the cosmolocal hollow flux is is 
how I live my life and have been probably for 20 years now uh, with forays from one virtual world into the real world. So most stuff online by internet, but then periodically getting together with the folks that I'm working with in this way in with the same ethos and philosophy and and actually doing projects face to face. Um, and one of the main things that I've been involved with is is doing learning exchanges uh, amongst myself and colleagues here and myself and colleagues in the internet world, uh, which has taken us to many extraordinary places. We are only limited by by our budget for travel, really, but we we travel and get together based on the project work that we're all doing anyway. So it has just become a an interchange, and in some ways, this this system is is just speaking to that, I suppose. Now, I really like it because I'm getting more descriptions of how how this life is. Um, and I'm getting validation for the fact that I've been doing it. It feels both comfortable and discomforting to me to, to live in this way. Um, and some of it's very hard. But there's inbuilt supports in doing this kind of work that you don't get in almost any organization that I know of. So the richness and the productivity and the creativity that could come out of this is un, unended, I think. It leads to all kinds of challenges, positive challenges, but you have to decide if you're going to take them up. And they all take time and resources too. So it's easy to fall in love with doing work in this way. But the practicalities of it are that you can't always work like that and not everything. I mean, all the experiments I try, 70% of them turn out really well. <laughs> 30% I have to get rescued from one way or another. <laughs> so be warned. <laughs> um, and over to Linda. Well, in some weird way, you know, I, I don't know if you guys, you guys know Nate Hagen's, I'm, I'm assuming, and his work. Maybe you don't. No, he's a, he's a really interesting guy. Uh, you can find him on YouTube, and he does all kinds of interviews, and then he's, lately he's been doing these, frankly, just little, you know, he, he's like a, a, an idea synthesizer uh, around climate and um God, he just brings amazing people um, into his interviews. And um, in many ways, and he talks about the super organism, meaning the reason we can't change climate so easily is that we're all part of this thing he calls the super organism. And he boils everything down for him into the great simplification. So I like his mindset because I kind of feel like what we're trying to do is a is a practical, um, I mean, this this is my, my projection under what, you know, you guys have been putting together for years, but it seems like um, no matter where we are in the world, we are part of the same holoflux. And because of my work with dialogue, I recognize the power of ideas. So the fact that you're making it both um, land-based, you know, practical, you know, you're, <laughs> you're planting things and eating from the land, I mean, that you can't get more practical and, you know, uh, geographically uh, committed than that. But you also, I and I, I still am trying to learn, but it, it, it seems like you're trying to bring people in who can see the larger picture of how uh, we can share ideas from all over the world to do something different, do, to do something radically different because it's the ideas that govern our co-creation of everything. That's what we humans do best. We co-create. That's how we killed off all the, the Neanderthals because we knew how to band together and how to work as a team. So I guess my only comment is I'm 
you know, I'm liking the conversation too, because I think, but, and I, and I think there are really different ways of operating. So we do, we do need to understand what it means to operate at both levels. And I'm assuming this is kind of a question for all of us, or you probably thought about it and I'm just trying to get up to speed, but my, I guess my question at this point is I'm assuming we're kind of still very much at the ground level in thinking about structure of how, you know, this is all coming together and how we're going to figure out who does what and how it all unfolds, right? So you want to have it really well thought through because as people join, you you know, you want to easily be able to answer questions that people are going to have because this is a really radically different way of operating, right? So I'm, I just wanted to clarify that. I'm not too far off in the ethers or something. <laughs> so back back to you, Roland. Uh, yeah, uh, and, and um, uh, so I want to I want to respond to where we are in the circle and uh, and then maybe nudge us along a little bit. Um, I think that. Um, the way that we've been working, we've been working with a very small number of people and um, that one of the ways that we get, we um, we respond to that is that we have iterations <laughs> to try to figure out how to bring people on and how to, how to work with people. And one of the things that in thinking about what is it, one of my, um, many years long question is where do I fit? Um, and even it just just as an organism on the, what did you, I can't remember what you called it, but the, the super organism that, uh, uh, and, and, and thinking about that in terms of reconciliation and colonization, uh, because I am here because of colonization. And so what does that mean in terms of me being in place? in this place and where is this place? And I tried, I, I've been thinking about, well, ultimately we are all, we all share the same planet and we all belong on the planet because we are part of the, we are part of the system that is the planet. And, uh, and so uh, there, there are barriers that have been created that are making it difficult for me to be able to acknowledge my place in the organism so that I can be part of the benefit to the organism. And that's, 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 that's where I'm coming from. I'm trying to connect dots. I'm trying to connect dots to be able to see the bigger picture so that I can, I can um, relax into my place uh, as a, a beneficial organism, part of this larger organism. So with all of these ideas, is there a way that we can start to ground them into, into some sort of action? Um, and I'm just going to, I'm, I have ideas, but I'm going to stop there and pass it on to Ben to, to uh, feed into that. To take us further off course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, and 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 actually, I think I'm building on what Rolan was saying, and Linda, the groundedness of what we're talking about. This is there's um, so there's two things. One is um, we do need to find a way of addressing people's questions, but I think that one of the skills that we need to develop is how to not answer people's questions, but instead invite them to start answering them themselves. And, you know, here's what we're doing. How do you fit? So that question, you know, if where do I fit is a question that no one can answer for anybody else, mm -hmm. but we can help to say sort of, you know, could you imagine fitting here, you know, um, and and making that invitation. And the point that I, I really am trying to make is that the grounding is not, and this is so hard to communicate, the grounding, the practicality of it, this the smallness of what we're trying to do, plant a garden, you know, don't even plant a garden, plant a patch, or do one thing in the next three to four months 
So part of sociocracy, one of the things I find really appealing to it is this idea of iterative experiments. Mm -hmm. And it's also the most effective way of onboarding people because you can't, if you're, if you're going to think that you're going to conceptually onboard them to something like this, it ain't going to happen. So how quickly can you get people to say, okay, I'm willing to do that. Mm -hmm. Here's something I can do. I will do that. And then let's see how it goes. And, um, so that's part of the of the technique and it's a little bit trickster principle because exactly what you were saying that humans have a general tendency i think to get fixed behind mm -hmm. ideas and one of the hallmarks of modernity is elevating certainty and and absoluteness mm -hmm. and predictability and you know stability to the ultimate extreme. So part of decolonizing is becoming familiar with the hollow flex, and that doesn't happen conceptually, right? You know because the conceptual the conceptual sphere of ideas is valuable, is useful, is you know it's not something that we want to get rid of, mm -hmm. but it has to be equally balanced with action in the real world and feedback in the real world. And what April was saying, if you're having the 70% hit rate, you are perfectly where you need to be, according to the research. Like that is op optimal learning is a 70% success rate. Mm -hmm. And you need the 30% failure to really, to for, you know, that's the grit mm -hmm. that actually brings out the good stuff, right? You know, that's the grit that focus you focuses you on the next step a little bit beyond the comfort zone. So um yeah, and I think and and given that, I feel like I can bring us or or with that, I can say, yeah. And so the important thing is just what are we going to try in the next couple of months? What can what what's the quickest thing that we can do in the uh oh it's not agile, it's the other thing, lean in lean methodology, what's the minimum viable product? What's the minimum thing that we could do that moves us towards engaging people in this worldview? And, and I know that there are some ideas out there already, and it's let's just pick one. We don't, we don't have to pick the right one. We just have to pick the one that seems to work for now, the one that seems most promising at this point. So with that, I go back to April. Well. What I would like to do in the next, what, are we talking six weeks, eight weeks? I'd I'd like to explore the uh, uh, the six conversations template for uh, for consideration as a uh, a backstop, a backdrop to the, to the work that we do. Um, and I I have a little a little bit of learner guilt because I haven't looked at the PowerPoint you sent me, Ben, but I will I will really I will. Um, and then I think we should go ahead and use some of that stuff. Find a group to apply it to with the incisive questions therein. I just want to explore the system. A little bit. I'm I'm used to being. I was talking to Roland about this this morning. I'm used to being the person that that uh, hatches the incisive questions myself. So I want to make sure about their questions. Um, I, th I think there's a lot of overlap. So that's one of the things that I think could be useful in the next while. On to Linda. Well, I don't know what the six conversation methods or whatever are. So I have a question about that. Um, it seems to me that in what you're raising, April, is where there might be some uh, boundary overlap with the outreach uh, guild. Um, I mean, certainly I'm here because you've done outreach with your tensions navigation process that, that roped me in. So I, I don't know how you're making those decisions and I don't know what, and I, I'm still kind of interested in whatever this indigenous, uh, I forget what you call it, but the, you have some workshop that 
So I'd like to I'd like to understand that more. So I mean I I don't know what uh what you have already in the hopper to work with like this whatever you're talking about April, but it does seem to me that if if one of the goals, which is quite intriguing to me personally, uh, I'll just admit to that uh, in terms of spreading this worldview. I mean I've I've been about this just about my entire well, mid-adult career and beyond, it's hard work. You know, people just don't want to talk about worldview. So I'm I'm very interested in having that conversation, uh, extremely interested, whether it's going to happen in this guild or in the outreach. Um, that, to me, is exciting. So I'll just leave it there. I mean, I have ideas, but I'd like to hear other people's ideas. And you guys have been obviously thinking about this for a long time. So... I'd like to be in that conversation whenever that happens, wherever that happens. Um, on to you, Roland. Uh, so the the uh, Indigenous Tools for Living is the course that um, Ben took that ha he's been sharing. And so Shirley Turcott is the champion. Is she the originator for it? Yeah. And uh, so I I found I've got her her YouTube channel um, and I I was thinking I'm going to put it in the chat. Oh, good. If you wanted to do any exploration? Yeah, I'd love to. About what that's a, what, about her her work and what that's all about. So there you go. Um, and uh, I think one of the I feel like for myself, it would be really useful to look at the different types of activities that we could um, we could do um, as uh, a form of <laughs> with uh, of play in the, in the sense of um, uh, uh, experimentation, living life as an experiment, um, and. Uh, and so trying trying the six conversations, almost like thinking of it as a board game, you know, um, I, I mean, there's definitely some things that are that are introduced like that. I think there's definitely looking at it to make sure that there's alignment, but taking it as and I think that this is a sociocracy principle of uh, uh, good enough for now, safe enough to try. Um, so I think, you know, in, in even, even just in the spirit of fun to, to try the six conversations, uh, likewise, I was thinking about, um, uh, ways to, uh, go deeper, uh, and to bring people together around ideas would be to, um, uh, have a, uh, something like a book club or study club. Um, because there are there are specific texts that have that have influenced the way that that we're doing things, and it's also a way for for maybe uh, uh, like a, 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 a there's a sharing possibility there also. Um, so, and I think that that fits into the heart, uh, heart work and philosophy. You know, getting together around around a text and having discussions uh, uh, about it. Uh, I've never been part of a group like that. I've always had this sort of romantic idea about what it's like. So I, I, uh, I'm not entirely sure how to set one up. If anyone else has experience with it, that would be fantastic if it's something that we decide to run with. Um, and and I'm also thinking about um, uh, who else can we get into this guild who, because I think that the sense I, I get is that we tend the the people who are here currently are all thinkers, and um, uh, there are other ways of connecting that are are maybe not being represented right now. Like, um, well, we've got April, so music, music is one, uh, and um, uh, food is another. They, they they tend to be more sort of being together kind of experiences, but uh, maybe thinking thinking in the, in terms of what's possible uh, in in other ways. Uh, yeah. So that's that's uh, that's what I've been thinking about. So uh, over to Ben. 
So I have been gathering considerations in note form in the what are the best next steps for engaging people, because I think that's the conversation that we're having right now. Um, and um, uh, and I'm, I have a lot of dittos on, you know, what I'm hearing. Um, and just to recap, because so uh, Linda was bringing up how do we link with outreach and network? I think uh, one of the good, so there's a question about uh, navigation sessions. Uh, are they an ongoing thing? Is that outreach? Is that here? Um, beyond that, if we're going to do these conversations, how do we engage people in them? How do we market them, let the people know about it? Um, so that's also an outreach question. Um, and we've talked about a book club, ITFL, the six conversations, and other, you know, music, food, et cetera. So how do we prioritize? How do we pick among those? Um, you know, where do we start? Which one do we want to start with? The um, ITFL, the one thing about it um, is it is a, um, I don't want to say proprietary. It is, it is a, a, a knowledge system and, uh, it, it, it's expensive, <laughs> you know, so to bring there, there aren't, uh, there is the YouTube channel and, and there's a lot that we can glean from that, but it's an area where I would not feel comfortable saying I could train anybody in it. I barely, I went to one, you know, I went to the training and um, so in order to bring people into ITFL, I think we would, and I, I, when we get our money, you know, one of the first things that I want to spend it on is bringing ITFL training on on site here in the fall, if that's possible. Um, so, um, but that that has a kind of a budget line that has to go with it. Um, so, and I guess the other thing too is in both for the book club and for the the six conversations. Um, actually, the six conversations has its own uh, structure that brings people to action, which I think is really good. And I will say I've never gone through the six conversations. I was had it recommended to me um, from a partner that I I quite trust. Um, who had they've been using it in um, in a parallel process that they're doing, and they were said lots of good things about it. Um, my understanding is pretty much I I went through the PowerPoint and I read the website, um, so I'm still very much in a learning mode on it as well. Um, but it does come highly recommended from people that I trust, um, and it looks also my first pass on it is there's. There are some really, there are some, I too am in the, the situation of trying to come up with the provocative questions. And there were some questions in there that I'm like, ooh, I wish I would have had that one in my pocket a while ago. So, um, uh, but my, and my, I think what I'm um, thinking about is for the book club, I would want to make, for me personally, I would want to make sure that it is tied to action in some way, that it's not just let's get around and talk about ideas. Um, and so that would be my only sort of caveat. I think it's well, and the one book that I was suggesting was Hospice, Hospicing Modernity. Um, and that actually has exercises in it. So that is a way in which it could, you know, be more than just conversation. There's actually exercises to go through and uh, um, some challenges in there. Anyhow, I am aware of time and um, uh, I'm not sure how we want to wrap this up, but I, but I feel like this is all very productive and good. And I don't want to like sort of, you know, I'm not trying to throw water on it or anything, but I'm just also aware of time. So April, over to you. Um, I wouldn't mind if you wanted to throw water on me. I am water, uh, water responsive. So that would be helpful probably from my point of view. Uh, just two things to to add to the hopper in terms of play and moving things on and into other kinds of action. Um, the critical thinking card game that I play with all my friends and they hate me for it because like you have to actually not be drunk 
or, you know, have eaten too much or whatever, if you're going to play it, because there is thinking involved as well. But it is certainly great as, as a foundation for, well, epistemology. How do we make our knowledge and how, how do we know what we know? How do we believe what we know? And all those kind of things. Um, and it's it's fun to play. And there's exercises in there. The other pack is the creative thinking card game, which I'm using with my learning exchange musicians at the moment. Um, and we're all becoming way more creative, but it's just another way in, actually. Um, so I would I would add those as possibilities because they're cheap and they're easy to play. And you can persuade people to, you know, you're just playing cards, right? How easy is that? Well, um, and it's changed the nature of, of conversations that I and my cohorts have. So transformative. Um, I I think it's time to wrap up our discussion because I have to go for one thing and, and I don't want to miss anything <laughs> from you guys. Um, I'm going to suggest that the next round be a closing round of of. How has this been? Um, and on to Linda. Um, well, um, I'm ready to start a book group <laughs> um, as a way to start. Uh, and um, what else? Uh, I, I looked up, uh, I already got onto your link, Roland, and I uh, keyed in the two books that we mentioned. They both look good. I'm in several book groups, and they are. They're, they're wonderful ways of um, helping people process new information. And it's nice that, uh, you know, this is a more of an organization. I mean, the book groups, we don't ever do anything together. We just we just look at ideas. So I, I really appreciated, Ben, you're um, trying to ground it, you know, into action. Um, so I'd like to look further at that uh, book you mentioned. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I really have to say. I mean, I think I, I guess we're going to meet in two more weeks. Just questioning that, and uh, seems like we've spoken about some really good opportunities. Although I do think they need to be coordinated, perhaps with the outreach, because if we started to do outreach, unless we're just doing it within ourselves, then we need to coordinate that. So it's really my yeah. last thing to do. I'll pass it to you, Roland. Yeah, and, and that I think is a um, part of working out how the, um, the different guilds work because I was in fact also thinking, well, you know, if there's going to be outreach to do these things, then is that something that's done through the outreach guild or do do individual guilds? And, and that the one thing that uh, I think helps to bring all of this together is the coordination circle, reporting to the coordination circle to bring everything back so that we are, we're everyone, all the guilds are aware of what the other guilds are are uh, are working on uh, as much as possible uh and uh i'm wondering um uh can we go or do we have uh do we have actions things to do between now and the next meeting and uh i'd like to go over that um because it's not clear for me um and uh and any coordination that might need to happen around those actions uh so yeah otherwise it's been fun uh over to ben i was trying to capture actions and um one action obviously is coordinating with outreach so that makes a lot of sense my preference i think would be and, and again, this is one of those, well, it'll evolve as we move forward, but I would like to avoid the guilds doing their own outreach and marketing, because then you're just going to get people hit, the same group of people hit yeah. with random emails, you know, a dozen times, as opposed to, it can go in the newsletter, we, you know, we send things out every two weeks, and we've got, 
we've got a good system for communicating with the people who are have inter expressed some interest. So let's you know lean into that system. But that does mean that there's coordination in terms of how much advance notice and you know that kind of stuff. Um, and I was thinking about a practical next step uh, is the book club. Even if we choose to set up a book club. Uh, one of the things that we could do before our next meeting is that we could ask people for their favorite books. You know, what's a book that you would like to, that, you know, that's uh, central to your idea of resilience and regeneration that you'd like to work through that that's deserving of some time and attention that you'd like to work through with other people and kind of develop that list. And we could even set it up in a way where, you know, we we brainstorm the ideas and then we do like a dot voting kind of thing and, you know, let people vote for the books that they're most interested in. That in itself is starting to engage people around the ideas yeah. and is a necessary next step. So rather than waiting until two weeks and then having us having a continuing conversation, I think we could take this out and start to ask people, you know, figure out how we want to solicit ideas for for book club. Um and I think those are the only two ideas. I think there still is, in my mind, there's still a question about where the navigating the attention sessions reside. Mm -hmm. So that's also one of the things that we should bring up with outreach and network. Um, and I don't know that we need to do more than that in the next week. It seems, I feel like that's kind of good enough to take on. Um, if, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm not closing the door or anything, but um, I I certainly am not in the business of trying to come up with more work to be done. So with that, I will pass over to April. Anything else that we need on the to do list? Um, I'm not sure how our to do list matches up with considerations because each of those needs to be considered further i think so is that what we need to do at the next meeting or what i'm not so sure um i i like the idea of uh of bringing people into a, into a book club by asking that question that ben suggested i think that's that's a really good way to focus on what it is that we're here to do, really, and you know, puts it into something that's that's more fun than just ruminating about <laughs> those questions. Um, for myself, before the next meeting, I'm certainly going to investigate the six conversations in some depth and see what I think about that, uh, and I'll also think about how to use the other ways of connecting people, including music and food. Um, that virtually we could all just eat something together at the same time. <laughs> um, which I've done with my other groups. It's not as satisfying as being together, but it is kind of funny. So um, there's that. Um, is there anything else that we need to have to be able to deliver to the coordination circle on Monday? Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this has been fun. And I'm going to pass on to Linda. Well, I'm just wondering uh, how... I haven't been to the coordinating circle yet. Do you have one person from each of the guild who volunteers to be at the coordinating committee? Um, I mean, it seems to me like if we're going to float the idea around for forming a book group, then we should take that to the coordinating circle and have, a, you know, I mean, maybe use the coordinating circle as sort of the way we um, figure out how we want to do that to the community. Um, uh, uh, I'll, I'll say process wise, 
Um, again, the guilds are where the action happens. The coordinating circle is just to make sure that there's no one's bumping into each other. So the coordination circle doesn't really or isn't intended to do anything. Yeah, the, um, the coordination circle is sort of like an uh, uh, uber, um, uh, what am I in this? Caretaker. Caretaker. It's like, Who am it, I now? <laughs> it's like the, the uber caretaker for the Lifeboat Academy. So the, the it's not a decision-making body, but it is a coordin coordinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so caretakers, uh, the care at least one caretaker from the guild attends the coordination circle. Anyone is welcome to and encouraged to. And uh, so definitely, what we will do is as, as a guild, um, April or Rolan will report back. We met. This is what we talked about. The ideas that seem to be emerging are, and our next steps are. So we have a coordination issue that we want to bring up with outreach that's around this and this. Um, we are, it, we're going to move forward with inviting ideas for books that people are interested in, unless there's an objection, unless anyone, you know, but the, um, I can say right now, this is uh, soliciting information about people's books is completely within the, the agreement of this guild. We don't need approval for it. We can just go do it. Um, there's no there's no potential conflict that can come from that. So we can just go do it. Um, and likewise, you know, talking about how we were exploring the six conversations. Again, that's kind of reporting. And if anybody has any questions or anything, that's an opportunity. But we don't need approval on those things because it's within our mandate is how can we engage people in worldview and philosophy discussions this is and and we're not using anybody else's resources so we're good to go as far as that goes now if we we can also ask for help if we need it like we could ask for you know um for uh for example we could put out the call could you let everybody know in your guilds that we're looking for ideas for books so that's a you know a request that could go out through the guilds um, so just as in terms of process, that's how I would answer that. Okay, so then so my question then gets resolved by some of us will be at the coordinating committee and we'll bring up this idea. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody. Other, I mean, I'm just learning who people are. So I, the only thing I can say I might do is to look at the, the, the couple of the things that were um, mentioned and think about anything else I might recommend. Uh, it might be useful at some point to have someone say they'll be the you know, focus person for that. And then maybe next time when we meet, which will be in two weeks, you know, we can maybe uh, come to some kind of decision, right? Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, uh, I guess if we wanted to communicate, like if I had ideas, if I reviewed something, uh, what would I do? Put it on Slack, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So Slack's probably the best way. Yeah. Okay. And email is also always email. will get it. If you email to the friends, friends at lifeboat.academy, then that also can get um, to the right group. Okay. All right. Then I, I think this was a great meeting. Lots of fun. And uh, I'm going away feeling satisfied. <laughs> Thank you. To the caretakers on to you Roland um yeah I'm glad that we added the uh investigating the six conversations um and when I was looking at it and I think I think we talked about it Ben I think um that it seemed like a like a, a good way of the the way the questions seem to lend themselves really well to exploring what the lifeboat academy is uh, is about and having discussions or, uh, uh, about it. So I was thinking of it actually as a kind of a group onboarding tool mm. where mm. we can use the questions to be able to plumb the depths of the of the project as it stands to be able to continue to uh, have it evolve and grow. Uh, so I'm glad that we had we added that, and I'm happy with the next steps. Um, and I also I was also thinking the the 
there's a, a, a to distill what the um, uh, or a coordinating circle does there's a there's a it's a it's there are sociocracy principles that are mixed into that and that is uh uh considerations uh and also uh giving an opportunity for people who might be affected to be able to um to 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 speak i was actually thinking that if we talk about needing to needing to do outreach for the book club the representative for the out, outreach guild can, can might just speak up and say hey that's the outreach guild we can do that for you so just that the, it opens up those possibilities mm -hmm. so uh yeah i with that back to uh, do we uh uh any last words are we at the last words stage i think we should be yeah um yeah this makes sense and actually um what i what kind of interested me in the six conversations is it felt like what i was hoping came out of the lifeboat circle conversation what does building a lifeboat mean to you um it i think it it's a way of going deeper into you know what does building a lifeboat mean to you and um so yeah, I agree. And that also, that might be coordination with outreach because I think they were talking about doing lifeboat circles again. And so this actually might be that we hand the mm. six conversations over to outreach and and say, you know, in, in thinking through what the next lifeboat circles look like, this might be useful. And we focus on the book club part, you know, and that's, so, and I also, in terms of sociocracy, I, I want to be really clear this, it is not that the coordination circle is the, the necessary gatekeeper for things, because where we know that there's something going on, some connection with outreach, we just talk to Ronnie, right? right? You know, like we know, we know who the caretaker for outreach and network is. And so we can say, hey, Ronnie, this came up in our conversation. We're thinking it's something to do with outreach. We can actually just have a conversation between the two guilds and figure out how that works and then bring that to this, the coordination circle. You know, outreach and uh, hard work had a conversation about it. We're going to divide things up like this. Does that sound OK? We're good. So it's not meant to be like some sort it's not a it's not a pinch point in the pipeline. It's just another way, it's an easier way where those can get highlighted. Anyhow, I am, um, I'm quite content. I think that we, and I also feel like moving forward, I can start to see the next steps, which is right now we, we've we gone from a very vague idea of what this might be about to, oh, we've got a few concrete things we can try. We're not sure the shape that those will take. I imagine by the next meeting, we'll be getting into the like, oh, okay, let's, Let's try this. And what's that look like? Who's going to do what? And then we're off to the races. So that all sounds really good to me. April, over to you. I don't think I have anything to add. Thank you, um, everybody. Um, I'm looking forward to the next meeting. Over <laughs> to Linda. Which is in two weeks, right? Okay, I'm done. This was great. Roland, any last thoughts? Uh, nope. Just um, uh, practically, um, Ben, we can talk about how to distribute access to the um, the Zoom room. Yep. Um, and uh, and I can make those changes. So the 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 calendar invitations. I think the way that I did it is is that it, it it repeats every two weeks. So if you if you use Google Calendar, it'll be in your Google Calendar, and I will I can update that um, entry on the calendar to reflect the link to the Zoom room that we're using and the link to the agenda. And that's it for me. Um, so thanks, everyone. And we've done last words and everything. So now <laughs> we'll see. So you go soon. home. Go home. Everyone <laughs> go home. <laughs> <laughs>
I gotta get out of here. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.